This one uses the rest components. I'll show you the rest components. That's probably a good place to start. So we're using the rest components and we're connecting to the API, Stack Exchange API for Stack Overflow. And we're gonna pull some questions out based on the C++ builder tag. Now, on the request here, you can specify the encoding you want. Now, if I leave this blank, Stack Exchange will always give me back gzip encoded data. They said, there's no reason not to, everybody can decompress this, so we're just gonna give you gzip encoded, and even if you say otherwise. Uh, actually, if you say something it doesn't recognize, or if you say blank, then it gives you gzip, or if they say gzip, if you ask for deflate, they'll give you deflate. But we're just gonna ask for gzip, gzip is the standard, and uh, we'll get that back. Now there's an event on here after execute. I'm going to take this off right now. That's the workaround, the fix for how to deal with gzip compressed data. So let's run this first. And we're going to hit fetch. It says response content is not valid JSON. And you can see that clearly is not valid JSON. So the way we make this work is on a request, we just add the after execute event handler in here. And we call this decode rest response passing in the rest response that we want to decode. And now we run it. We fetch and we see clearly we got some JSON here and look and sure enough, that's a beautiful grid full of stack overflow questions that are tagged C++ builder. Lots of great fun information to look at here. So this decode rest response actually is written in object Pascal, and it is using the um, ID lib, ID Z lib compressor, all right here, ID compressor Z lib, that's the one we're looking for. And that is the Indy compressor Z lib library. And it looks to see what the content encoding is, and then compresses D gzip. Now, I tested it with the deflate because that's the server also supports deflate. It doesn't work. And I did some research in the deflate. Apparently, deflate is widely broken on the internet. <laughs> there, when it was originally implemented, people implemented different ways and expecting different things. And so some servers and some browsers try and do a little uh, soft shoe dance to try and make it work. It doesn't always work. And in this case, it doesn't work. So uh, that's why gzip is recommended, and that's why gzip is the most common compression format used on the web. So you can download this code and just use it in your C++ projects, and you don't need to bother bother with it, but this is just an example of how you can use the Indie Compressor Zlib to deal with compressed HTTP data. And now lastly, here's this is using the zip file compression. So what we're doing here is we're just going to uh, get the directory, get the files in a directory, which is going to be the up two folders from where it's ran from, which will be the source code for the project itself. And we're going to use the tzip file, which is in system.zip. And we open it and we give it a file name, which is the file name on disk of the archive, which in this case is demo.zip. And we specify the mode, which in this case we're writing to it. And now we're going to spin through all the files that we found in our directory listing, and we're going to add them to that. Now, you add it, you give it two names. You give it the source file name, and then you give it the destination file name. This is what's called inside the zip file. Now, you can store the full path, although you want to reverse the direction of the slashes, and so instead of back slashes, you want to store them as forward slashes. Uh, it's just the way that it stores them in the archive, and then you reverse it on the way back out. And then what we're doing here is we're looking at the zips file info for the file we just added to get the compressed size and the uncompressed size, just so we can calculate the ratio. And we'll put that in a list box just to view it here. So we'll go ahead and run this. And there we go, we see that's the compression ratios and the file names of the files we just added. You can't, there's a number of other options you can do with zip files. So this is just kind of scratching the surface. But you can see it's pretty easy to work with the tzip file in order to create and add files to a zip file archive on disk.